Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Bob Brocker. I'm the founder and president of AgeWise Colorado, and we have Barbara Boyer, who is our uh, executive director. And we're joined by Chandra Price this morning, who's going to be talking to us about uh, Medicare. And um, before, before we get started, and I introduced Chandra, I just wanted to share with you a few slides about who we are. And I promise this won't take very much time at all. So uh, let me do that. Okay, so today's webinar is, you know, what you need to know about Medicare costs and coverage for 2024 and actually 2023 as well. So today's presenter is Chandra Price. Uh, she is the founder of the Medicare Teachers and has been a licensed health insurance agent specializing in Medicare since 2013. She loves teaching active older adults about their plan options and has helped thousands of Medicare beneficiaries over the last decade. And before she became an insurance broker, she taught French. Um, I love French. I just can't speak it. At East High School in Denver Public Schools and at Nicholson High School in Chicago. Also spent a year as an English assistant in a public high school in Nîmes, France, and received the 2023 uh, NABIP, NABIP um, Colorado Rising Star Award. And in 2022, received Colorado Gerontological Society's Young Professional and Aging Award. So um, I'm not qualified to receive Young Professional in anything. So uh, that's great, good for you, Chandra. A little bit about AgeWise for those of you who are not aware of us. Um, we are working to become that premier nonprofit information education and vetted service provider hub for aging Coloradans and all future and uh, current and future caregivers. So as it says at the bottom, you know, we're free to use, but not free to provide. Um, our population is changing pretty rapidly here in Colorado. Uh, last year, our 60 plus population exceed, exceeded our under 18 population for the first time. And as you can see from this chart, it's going to continue to be that way for a very long time. Uh, we aim at uh, both the older adults and adult children, friends who uh, may become a caregiver of an older adult or a family member uh, at some point in time. And between the two of them, there are about 3 million people in the state of Colorado. So this is just a screen grab from our homepage. So you can see what the homepage looks like. We encourage people to go there and uh, poke around, see what's there. What, we have a lot of information, education, and uh, many, you know, 300 and almost 350 uh, service providers as well. And they've all been vetted for you ahead of time. So <clears throat> we now have about 63 recordings on our website and they're all on YouTube. Um, and then uh, we have some of the recent webinars we've had have been li have li are listed here. And I want to wanted to feature this one because uh, this will be pretty interesting. December fifth, uh, some of the current uses of AI in healthcare services, and we're going to have three physicians from uh, UC Health talking about that topic. Uh, one of them being a bioethicist who focuses on keeping AI from sliding into the dark side. So um, something that we read about constantly. So <clears throat> with that, I will stop and turn this over to Chandra. And uh, as she said earlier, she's willing to take questions along the way. So you can uh, unmute yourself and, and do that it, as needed. So go ahead, Chandra. Um, so, uh, as Bob said, I've been in um, a, a licensed health and life insurance agent since 2013. Um, Medicare is my main business, and I am the founder of the Medicare Teachers Agency. Um, we do not work for the government. We are independent brokers. So we contract with the, um, the insurance carriers and help our clients to choose Medicare plans. Um, but I, as a former teacher, um, and most of the agents in my agency also have backgrounds in education, um, our hearts are in teaching about um, Medicare and how things work so that we're making a good impact in our communities. So um, uh, 
I just told you all this. I guess I can can skip this one. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about vocabulary and um, because that's part of the problem with understanding Medicare. And I've found that because most people don't live and breathe Medicare like we do, um, you might only think about it really um, in the fall when you're trying to evaluate your Part D prescription drug plan or your Medicare Advantage plan. And so I wanna make sure that we're using the same terminology together um, as we uh, as we talk today. So it'll be some updates, but also just to make sure that you are clear about what plan you have and why you have it. So we'll talk about Medicare parts versus plans, um, Advantage versus supplement plans, um, how Part D prescription drug coverage works, and then how the um, Inflation Reduction Act is affecting Part D um, this year and in the coming years. Um, so I'll start here with CMS. CMS is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. It's the part of the government that regulates everything. And so you'll see CMS on, um, on the cover of your Medicare and You book. Um, I think it's on the back of your Medicare card. You'll see CMS frequently. And they have very strict rules about um, things that I am allowed to say. So um, without having other paperwork done in advance. So um, today is going to be purely educational. I cannot speak to um, plan specifics, but if you have specific questions, I am allowed to answer your question. So um, I am going to give you as much information as I can, but still be compliant with the rules. Um, so Medicare itself has four parts. And original Medicare is the paper Medicare card that comes from the federal government. And that has part A on it and part B. And most people have both. Some people only have one. Um, but part A pays for inpatient services. Part B is for outpatient services. And that card with A and B on it, that is the only thing that comes from the federal government. Everything else comes from private insurance companies, um, such as Medicare Advantage plans, which are also known as Part C, but you're, you're not gonna hear it called Part C very often. Usually it's Medicare Advantage. Um, Part D, prescription drug plan coverage. Sometimes you have a Part D standalone prescription plan. Um, frequently, if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, Part D is included in the plan itself. Um, and some people choose to go with a Medicare supplement instead of a Medicare Advantage plan. And Medicare supplement plans also come from private insurance companies. Um, so those are choices that you're going to be making um, outside of your original Medicare card that you have. So just a little bit of vocabulary. Um, I can't go past this as a teacher. I have to make sure we're defining some terms. Um, the premium means what you pay each month to basically to buy your card. So you have a premium for part B as in boy for your Medicare card. And most people are paying $164.90 a month for part B. Um, if you're taking your social security already, they are they're taking that 164.90 out of your social security um, check before they direct deposit your money. So you might not even see that come out. If you are delaying getting Social Security, then you're probably sending money into the government each month for that Part B. And some people pay more than that. Some people pay less, and it's income-based, um, kind of like there's different scales for um, taxes, where if you make between this amount and this amount, you pay your tax brackets, you know, X, Y, or Z. Um, Medicare has a similar um, scale, but most people fall into the, the 164.90. That number will change um, pretty much every year. And we do not know at the present time what the number is going to be for next year. I've been hearing rumors going around that it's going to be about $10 increase. Um, and we should know that it usually comes out around Thanksgiving, um, but we don't know that for sure yet. Um, most people qualify for Part A without having to pay a premium, because if you look at your payroll taxes, um, one of those FICA taxes is actually paying into Medicare. So as long as you've worked for 40 quarters um, or 10 years, basically, uh, you've paid into Part A. 
So that's what premiums are, and that's the premium for original Medicare. Okay, so the premium for Part A is usually paid for. Most people are paying a premium for Part B to have to buy that paper Medicare card. Deductibles. A deductible means you have to pay 100% of the bill before your insurance starts paying anything. And so in 2023, there are deductibles for that paper Medicare card. And most people don't just use that paper Medicare card. So you probably don't see these deductibles. But FYI, um, Part A has a deductible of $1,600 per benefit period. And what that means is um, a benefit period for Medicare, original Medicare, is um, 60 days. So if you were to go into the hospital, you would pay $1,600 before Medicare starts paying. And then once you've met that deductible, then your Medicare card's going to start picking up um, picking up the bill. And then you're going to go into that, um, uh, that's, that split with a coinsurance split, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, if you go to the hospital and you're released, and you were to go back into the hospital within 60 days, it counts as the same um, benefit period. But where it gets a little bit tricky is if you go to the hospital and you're released, and then after 60 days, you go back, that opens a brand new benefit period where you're liable for that $1,600 again. So you could potentially have to pay um, that $1,600 multiple times in a calendar year, which is why we always strongly encourage um, our clients to either choose a Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement Plan to help with those costs. Um, and then Part B prescription, uh, Part B, Part B as in boy is for outpatient services. So for doctors, physical therapy, et cetera. And that also has a deductible and that's $226 per year per year in 2023. Again, th those numbers are going to change um, when we hear what the premium is going to be. Um, and so for Part B, the first time you go to the doctor, you have to pay $226 out of your own pocket. And once you've met that deductible, that's actually a calendar year deductible. You don't have to pay that a second time in the same calendar year. January 1 opens the new calendar year where you would pay that deductible again. Um, co-pays and co-insurance. Um, co-pays are fixed amounts. Co-insurances are percentages. So we were talking before about the, um, the Medicare um, Part A and Part B deductibles. Once you've met the deductibles, the Medicare is going to pay 80% of the bills, which is great, and you pay 20%. So if you're just going to the doctor um, and you're paying 20% of a $100, $200 doctor bill, um, most people don't mind paying that. They can afford that. Um, but where you want to make sure that you're protected is if you um, get in a car accident, you um, have uh, cancer treatment and you have chemotherapy, you have uh, open heart surgery, you have your hip replaced, 20% of a big bill uh, you care very deeply about. So you want something else um, to help you because there's no cap on that 20%. Um, I'm going to skip working today. Um, so this picture I took straight out of the Medicare and You book. And I've noticed my clients have started to receive the 2024 Medicare and You book. Um, I have not figured out how some people get them and some people don't. Um, so if you didn't receive one, you could always go online. Or if you email me, I can send you a digital version. Um, you might get one in the mail. You can also request one. But this is um, just a breakdown on, on your Medicare choices, how things work. And you see that line down the middle? That's a dividing line, basically. You can't cross it. So I'm going to talk about the left side of this page and then the right-hand side. Um, are there any questions before I move on? Awesome. So on the left-hand side, some people um, on this call might have the system where you have three different cards in your wallet. You have your Part A and Part B on your paper original Medicare card. You have a Part D prescription drug card. And then you have a supplement card that supplements your paper Medicare card. And another term for Medicare supplement is Medigap. If you don't know that those two terms mean the same thing, it can kind of scramble your brain. So Medicare supplements and Medigap policies are 
the, those terms refer to the same thing. And those policies fill in the gaps that your original Medicare card leaves behind. Okay, they supplement your original Medicare card. So the um, you have three cards that work together. You have your you when you go to the doctor, you take your paper Medicare card and your supplement, and they make photocopies of it and they bill your both of those cards. And then when you go to the drugstore, um, you take your Part D prescription drug card and um, and they run your drugs through that. Um, now on the right hand side is Medicare Advantage plans. And they're also known as Part C, but you don't hear that called Part C as much. Usually you hear it called Medicare Advantage. And um, your mailboxes are probably getting flooded with insurance um, literature right now. And usually it's for a Medicare Advantage plan because they're really competing with each other to get your attention this time of year. Um, Medicare Advantage plans, um, as you can see on this, in that first paragraph, they're usually bundled. Um, plans. So just to get your head around it, basically it takes um, hospital and doctors and drugs, and it takes everything and it bundles it together and it puts it on one single card. So you have one card that you carry around in your wallet. Um, you don't throw away, don't throw away your Medicare card. Just the other day, somebody was telling me that uh, somebody recommended, uh, they said, oh, you have a Medicare Advantage card plan. You don't need your Medicare card. You do. Don't throw away your Medicare card. Put it in a safe place with your birth certificate and your passport and other important documents so you can get your hands on it if you need it. Um, but your Medicare uh, Advantage plan is responsible for paying the bills for hospitals, for doctors, and if it includes Part D for your drugs. Um, and um, that's all I'll say about Medicare Advantage. So both of these... Um, Everything except for original Medicare comes from a private insurance company, um, which is what we help with. And I will tell you this, I love everything about Medicare. I love supplement plans. I love advantage plans. I think that they, everything about Medicare gives you terrific coverage. It just matters what's important to you, um, what works for your budget, what works for your health conditions, um, everybody's decision about what kind of coverage they need is it's actually a very personal decision. Um, you don't just want what your neighbor has or what your, your cousin has, because it could vary for you what's correct. So um, just to sum up again, left side of that page, you've got three cards. And on the right side, you have one card. So I just want for you to think right now what kind of a plan you have, because that will help you while we're talking about um, some of the things coming up. So this comes from the Kaiser Family Foundation. Um, Medicare Advantage plans um, this year is the first year that um, Medicare Advantage plans have surpassed original Medicare um, enrollment. And as a matter of fact, uh, I don't know if any of you guys got the, the new AARP bulletin. Um, this just came out this week. And um, it even has um, a little article in there. So if you have access to that, you might want to read it. It talks about the future of Medicare and um, some of the anticipated changes in the future. Um, but you can see on this chart in the future that they, they anticipate anticipate um, that Medicare Advantage plans are going to um, continue to the enrollment in Medicare Advantage plans will continue to rise. Um, and um, Medicare Advantage plans are a little, um, they're becoming more um, prevalent. There are more options to choose from. Um, they are in more markets. It used to be that, um, you know, when I first got into the industry, um, if you lived in rural areas or if you were up in the high country, you were not going to have access to a Medicare Advantage plan. And that has been changing um, over the past three years or so, um, and that will continue to change their expansions in uh, Medicare Advantage networks. So for that reason, and because of some of the other um, perks for Medicare Advantage, um, people are choosing Medicare Advantage plans. So we're going to talk hey, about... Chuck, yes. Chuck, stop you for just a second. We had a couple of comments in the chat. Um, oh, thank you. 
It's uh, one says uh, original. I have original Medicare and do pay a copay. And and then that article, I read that article this morning. It said, you know, brokers are paid more to sign up for a Medicare Advantage. But what basically that just means you don't get paid for original Medicare, uh, as I understand it. So uh, do you want do you want to address that at all? Yeah, so um, we are compensated by the insurance companies when you enroll in plans. And for Medicare supplement plans, um, typically they reimburse us or they we're paid on commission. So typically they give us um, a percentage of the premium for Medicare supplement plans. And then typically people with a supplement also enroll in the Part D plan and we're also compensated for the enrollment in Part D. Um, and so that's usually it's a percentage for Medicare supplements. For Medicare Advantage plans, we're paid a fixed amount um, every year. So if somebody is new to us, we're paid a, a lump sum. And then for my clients, most of my clients, when they enroll with me, they don't leave. So they um, the following year, I'm still paid each month a little bit. So that way, when my clients have questions, they can call me. Um, if something goes sideways, I work on their behalf. So we get paid either way. Um, there is a difference. Um, I don't worry about the difference because it works out in the end. And um, I'm never going to tell you something based on a commission. Some people will, um, but um, just steer clear from people who seem like they're trying to encourage you to go into a particular plan versus another, because that's a choice that you should make, not based on a commission. Okay, thank you. Sorry for interrupting, but go ahead. Please. No, I'm glad you did. Yeah, please, anytime. And was there another question in there or was that it? There's a comment. Uh, yes, I don't think it's a question. Um, basically, it's a comment that's saying that the Medicare.gov website works well. And uh, so I guess that's encouraging people to use it um, when they can. Yes, so uh, for the Medicare.gov website, Bob, um, right now, I would be very cautious about using it. Um, the first couple of weeks in October, it's loading from the carrier information, and it is notoriously incorrect, especially the first couple of weeks, especially for Part D. Um, so you could use it to get an idea, but then you're also going to want to go in and just verify that the information is correct because some of the drugs are loading incorrectly, they're showing as not being on the formulary or um, being strange costs. Um, also, I've noticed that some um, providers are not loaded correctly. And um, when I go in directly to the carrier provider directories, I can locate providers that way. Um, and that's actually a better way to check. So um, yes, Medicare.gov gives you an idea. The other thing I will point out about Medicare.gov is it does not tell you nuances about the plans. And um, if you, well, I'm gonna tell you cause I'm a broker, of course I want for you to work with me. But if you work with a broker, we go to, we, we have trainings every year um, just on Medicare uh, Advantage Part D plans. We have to pass tests every year. Um, but then we also go to the carrier rollouts. So all of the major carriers, they have presentations where they teach us about the plans. So there are nuances about the plans that you cannot see on Medicare.gov. And um, so that's just something, yes, you can see a lot of the information, um, but I would encourage you to at least double check with somebody. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're going to talk about Medicare supplements and Part D plans, and then we'll talk about Advantage plans. And while we're talking about the Part D, we'll also talk about um, some of the Inflation Reduction Act changes. Um, so Medicare supplements, now this is where it can really make your brain hurt. They also have letters. So we have Part A and Part B for original Medicare. Part C is Medicare Advantage. Part D is for drugs. But you can see on this page, there's plan A and plan B and plan C and plan D. It goes all the way up to plan N. So if you don't know that the word part and plan mean two different things, most normal people, when you're reading through this, you see a four-letter word starts with a capital P and you, 
with a letter behind it and they can get mixed up pretty quickly. So Medicare um, supplements have these planned letters. Um, the most popular plan letter at the present time with our clientele is plan G. And if you take a look at plan G, you can see straight down that line where it shows a bunch of 100%. It pays for almost everything that original Medicare leaves behind. Okay, it picks up almost all of those gaps. The one gap that's that, that one blank hole in plan G there is the part B deductible. Um, do you guys remember what the part B deductible is? Oh, tell us. <laughs> 26. This year it's 226. So what that means is if you have a plan G, the first time you go to the doctor, you have to pay the first $226 out of your pocket. But then after that, look, everything else is covered. So your Medicare card and your Medicare supplement plan G card are going to work together to pay your medical bills. And they're all 100% covered. Foreign travel, Medicare doesn't pay outside of the country, but Plan G will cover up to 80% of the costs um, with some limits. So Plan G is the most popular plan. Plan F used to be the Cadillac plan, because look at that, that pays for everything. But part of the MACRA Act um, that was passed, I don't know, 2016, I think, um, that went into effect January 1st of 2020. Um, anyone who's new to Medicare as of that date, January 1, 2020, um, is not eligible to enroll in a Plan F. It's closed to new beneficiaries. So that's why Plan G is the, is the popular plan now. Um, plan N is also interesting. It covers a lot of the same um, uh, coverage that Plan G covers. Um, you have co-pays. If you go to the doctor, you pay $20 for office visits for primary care or specialists. You pay $50 if you go to the emergency room. And um, you, in addition to paying the Part B deductible, you're also responsible for any Part B excess charges that your providers might charge. Um, not a whole lot of doctors charge excess charges, but they're allowed to charge up to 15% more than what original Medicare allows. Because uh, Medicare has a, a fee schedule, right? So they pay um, doctors a certain amount for every service, and it's less than they pay for commercial products. So sometimes doctors would like to charge a little bit more to get compensated for their time. And so they can charge up to 15% more than what Medicare allows. And with a plan in, if your doctor happens to be one that charges excess charges and you can call them, they'll tell you if they do, um, then if you choose to go to that doctor, you'll be responsible for that amount. There's other letters here available too. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but if you would like more information, um, of course, I'm happy to share that with you uh, individually. But no um, so Medicare cover. Uh, just one second, you know, that's a question. So no Medicare plan covers assisted living um, right. and and Medicare in general covers skilled nursing, but only for a limited time, if I remember that correctly. Is that, is that right? That's also correct. It'll cover 100 days of skilled nursing. Okay. And that's it. Thank but you. no long-term care. Okay. So anything that's assisted living or long-term care, that would be a separate insurance policy that we would talk about. Okay. Um, the things that we love about Medicare supplement plans, um, you can see any provider across the country who takes original Medicare and has room to see you. Um, it's easy to predict your cost because you're sending money to the insurance company every month. And in exchange for that, you have very few out-of-pocket costs. Um, you know, you're you're in a way kind of prepaying your medical bills because you're sending that money in every single month, whether or not you go. Um, referrals are not required. Um, the cons to that, <laughs> kind of the pro of being able to send that money in every month so that you don't have surprise bills, that's also could be considered a con by some people because you're sending money to the insurance company every month, whether or not you're using services. So sometimes it can be annoying if you're pretty healthy and not using it um, to be paying that premium. Um, my parents have one of each kinds of Medicare. My, my stepmom has a supplement and my dad has a Medicare Advantage plan. And my stepmom used to complain to me um, until she started finally using her plan about how she was 
sending money to the insurance company every month and they never had to pay anything. It's like, well, okay, well, that's the plan you chose. <laughs> and so that's that's an objection that we hear occasionally about supplement plans. Um, you can expect to pay more every year for your Medicare supplement plan. Uh, we tell our clients to anticipate an eight to 10% increase. Usually it's not that high. 5% um, is probably a little bit more average um, because there's usually a table of premiums. So this is where you are, you're 65 and this is what you owe. And next year, you, happy birthday, now you're 66, so you move down the line, so now you owe this. So every year, happy birthday, this is what you owe. And they can also raise rates on the community as a whole, if it's community rated plan. So you can anticipate um, rate increases every year. Um, and also you have to buy a separate Part D prescription drug plan, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, so, uh, we, have a, we, have a, we have a question, Chandra, in the okay. chat um, from Sylvia. Can, can you see it or do you want me to read it? Um, hold on, I can find it. Thanks. It's the one at the very, uh, the, the two at the very bottom. About the 100, 100 days. days. Oh, for skilled nursing, Sylvia. Yeah. So let me right, read this right. real quick. It says 100 days if you continue to make health improvements. Do you have any cautions or tips if you pay Medicare Part B premiums? Um, I don't quite understand the Part B. But it won't the part paying the Part B premium wouldn't matter if you are paying it directly, um, or if you are. Um, before you take it on Social Security, you can write a check and mail it in. You can set up Easy Pay with Medicare, so it bills your um, bank account every month, um, and there's no disadvantage to setting up easy pay or having an auto pay. In fact, I always recommend it for these premiums to set it up on auto pay, any premium, um, in case you have a family emergency or a health crisis. So that way you never worry about whether or not your health insurance has been paid. Um, and then your 100 day comment, yes. So um, she's asking about uh, skilled nursing. And in order to stay in skilled nursing facilities, um, you need to be making uh, daily progress. And so there is a 100 day limit for skilled nursing stays, but when you're in skilled nursing, if your, um, if your uh, health plateaus and you stop improving with the physical therapy and the um, nursing support and the, the extra care that you're getting in skilled nursing, if you plateau, um, then they are going to um, release you from skilled nursing. That's correct. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, there we go. Um, you can enroll in Medicare um, supplement plans when you turn 65, and throughout the year, you can also apply um, for Medicare supplement plans um, if you did not enroll right when you were first eligible, but then you have to answer the medical questions. And so with a Medicare supplement plan, you want to choose to enroll in that when you are um, turning 65, or you are going to choose to enroll in it while you are healthy. Because you don't just buy a supplement plan with money, you also must purchase it with your health. You have to qualify to get one if it's not right when you're first turning 65 and turning on your Medicare. And there are some nuances here. For, for everything I say, there's always like a little asterisk or a little, something could be a little bit different for you. So yes, there are there can be some exceptions here, um, but typically that's when you're going to involve. Part D prescription drug plans. Um, you don't have to have Part D. We're gonna recommend all day long to get Part D, even if you're taking no medications because if you're prescribed something in the middle of the year and you don't have a Part D plan um, and you want one later, you can um, sometimes, you'll have to wait for most people until the fall and then the plans don't start until January 1. So you're without 
prescription drug coverage when you need it during that part of the year. And then also if you enroll in a Part D prescription drug plan um, late, most people are going to pay a penalty for enrolling late and it's permanent. So um, you want to get some sort of Part D, um, even no matter what your medications are, or even if there are no medications, we recommend that. Um, every fall, so right now, um, you want to look at the summary of benefits and also the plan's drug list, which is known as a formulary. And that is super important. It's very important to check your drug plan every year. I meet with people, especially in the next couple of years here, I meet with people who they've been on the same plan that's been working for them. Last week, I met with a lady and she's paying a hundred, I, I can't tell the premium, sorry. So anyway, she's she 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 should have checked her plan. Um, sorry, CMS has rules about what I can say and what I can't say, so I have to just stop myself right there. Um, Medicare supplement plans, uh, you buy the separate Part D plan. Medicare Advantage usually includes it. So that was cool. Okay, so the Inflation Reduction Act. So this is some this is how the Inflation Reduction Act is affecting Part D, and some of it already went into effect this year. So um, people who are taking insulin, if you're insulin um, dependent for your diabetes, um, the insulin copays are only $35 a month. They used to be much higher. Um, and that's including going through the coverage gap. Um, vaccines are covered and um, the, uh, the drug companies are not supposed to raise the drug prices faster than inflation, inflation or else they have to um, uh, give rebates back. So in 2024, so beginning in January, there are four stages for Part D prescription drug plans. The first stage is the deductible stage. The second stage is initial coverage, which is when you go fill your prescription and they tell you you owe a copay when you pick up your drugs at the pharmacy. The third stage is the coverage gap. And we'll talk about these a, a little bit more. Um, but the fourth stage is um, catastrophic coverage. In beginning in January, that 5% coinsurance for catastrophic coverage drugs, that's going away. It's vanishing. It's gone, which is really good news for people who have very, very expensive medications. Um, also, some people get extra help for their prescriptions because their income is lower than average, and um, that's a program that's administered by Social Security. And they're expanding that program to up to 150% of the federal poverty limit. So I'm gonna go skip to the next slide and I might come back to this. So <clears throat> this is how Part D works this year, right? So you can see these circles. Um, I like how this shows you the representation of what you're responsible for. So that orange part is what you as a Part D consumer is responsible for pain. So the first stage for Part D prescription drugs is the deductible phase. And if your plan has a deductible, it could be up to what $505 that you would have to pay out of pocket before your Part D plan pays anything. Now that's not guaranteed that you have a $505 deductible. Some plans have lower deductibles, but that's the most that they could charge you. Um, once you met the deductible, you go into initial coverage. And that's where you're paying a copay or a certain amount and your drug company is paying a certain amount for your medications. And in terms of the actuarial costs, you're responsible for about 25%, although you'll know that some of your prescriptions um, don't cost nearly that much or they don't cost a whole lot when you pick up your drugs. Um, and that's initial coverage and that's between the deductible stage and then um, the coverage gap, which is when your total drug costs reached 4,660. And that's not what you're paying out of pocket. It's what you are paying plus what your insurance company is paying on your behalf. So in other words, the full cost of the drugs. So you're in initial coverage until you've reached that 4,660. Next year, it's going up to 5,030. Um, and then you'd go into the coverage gap and you have to pay 25% of the cost of your medications until you reach the um, end of the coverage gap, which this year um, is 7,400, next year it's 8,000, at which point in time you would go into catastrophic coverage. And you're getting credit in the coverage gap for what you're paying 
plus what the manufacturer is um, discounting off of that. Um, so you're, you're, when you get into the catastrophic coverage, this year, some people are paying 5% of their drugs through the end of the year. Next year, that 5% is going away. So in effect, you're just going to have the three, the first three circles that people are responsible for. They're not calling it that exactly, but in effect, that's what it's going to be. So your out-of-pocket costs for people who have very expensive medications is going to be roughly around $3,300 or so. Okay. Now, um, next year, the deductible is going to be 545. Um, there's that 3,300. And um, the Part D plans and the manufacturers are going to help more with the with the prescription costs. And the article where I got those circles, where I cut this out to put in here, um, if you see that QR code, if you have your phone handy, um, if you go to that QR code, you'll be able to pull up the article if you're interested in reading it from the Kaiser Family Foundation. It talks about these um, Part D changes um, as a result of the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, so let me just, let me, let me look forward real quick to see if I, what's next? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll come back to that one in a second. But in the meantime, um, let me pause here. Are there any questions about what's happening in 2024, beginning in January of this coming year for your Part D? So um, in 2025, there'll be even more changes. So people with very expensive medications are going to get relief because there's going to be a new out-of-pocket spending cap of $2,000 for Part D prescription drugs beginning January 1st of 2025. There has not never been a maximum out-of-pocket on Part D before. So this is a significant change, okay? The coverage gap phase is going away and there's going to be even some more changes other than that. Okay, so there's there are more changes that are coming up the, down the line. Yes, Andre, does how how does this relate to what we we've heard about for years the the, the donut hole? I mean, how how does it relate to that term? <clears throat> Thank you for saying that. I should have defined that better. The coverage gap is also known as the donut hole. <laughs> okay. So. Um, <laughs> That's this, the third circle here is the coverage gap, also known as the donut hole, where you all of a oh. sudden you go to the pharmacy and, and you're, you used to pay, you know, a fixed amount. And then all of a sudden it triples and you, your jaw drops, right? Because you're so shocked. Well, you probably went into the donut hole and you didn't even realize it. Next year that still exists, but in 2025, the donut hole is vanishing too. It's going to be gone. Okay. Um, now, then, then it'll be a, like a fritter instead of a donut. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, but one thing to caution, this is why I think it's very important this year and next year and probably the year after. Next year for sure. This year, probably. I want for everybody to double check your drugs. And don't just do it on Medicare.gov because they are. It's double check. Double check with with somebody who can help you, or go direct to your plan to see if you if you are looking at your Part D prescription drug plan with your current carrier. Uh, you're only looking at what they have to have to offer you, and so you could be potentially paying a lot more than you need to for your prescription drug coverage. Um, most carriers are going to have uh, two or three different Part D prescription drug plans if you have a standalone Part D plan. Um, and some of them cost less and some of them cost more in terms of the premium that you pay each month. Um, can you imagine why you would pay more for the for a premium for a, a drug plan? I can't tell you, you have to guess. It covers more. <laughs> it, it'll cover more, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The the drug formulary covers more medications. So some people have to choose a plan that costs more because their drugs, they need to, a plan that includes their Part D prescription drugs. So they have to choose a plan that 
that includes them. And oftentimes um, for some people, they have to pay more. So uh, we had a question that popped in. So the, uh, the the conclusion here is starting in 2025, uh, you won't spend more than $2,000 out of pocket for your drugs for the whole year. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. Now, here's the uh, uh, food for thought. If there's a brand new maximum out of pocket of $2,000 and they're negotiating some prices and they're getting rid of the coverage gap phase, who's going to pay for that? You know, I mean, the insurance companies or the government, are they just going to say, okay, so now we're going to pick up all the rest of those costs for you because we're nice. Right. So that's why I say it's very important to double check your plans this year and next year and the year after. Um, you should do it every year anyway. But because of these significant changes to Part D, um, somehow these changes are going to get paid for. And I don't know how. You know, nobody can tell you exactly how consumers are going to be affected, but um, somehow this is the money is going to get shifted around. And there will be um, there will be people who do not check their drugs with their Medicare Advantage plan or their Part D plan, and they will be surprised when they go fill their prescriptions in January. And here's a problem: Medicare Advantage plans. Um, just for your education, there's four. There are different times that you can enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, and I'll come to the slide that will show this. Um, but you can enroll when you're first turning 65. Um, you can enroll every fall between October 15th and December 7th. Um, that's the annual enrollment period where you can change your Medicare Advantage plan and your Part D plan. In the winter, every year between January 1st and March 31st, there's an open enrollment period where if someone is enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan and is dissatisfied with their plan or needs to make a change, they can make a one-time change from one Medicare Advantage plan to another in the first quarter of the year. Part D prescription drug plans do not have that same chicken exit the first quarter of the year. There's Part D plans, you, you make your decision by December 9th, or December 7th, and then that's it through for the, for the next calendar year, unless you have a special reason why you can change, such as you move or your income is low or there's, there are some other reasons why you might be able to change, but for most people, you're locked in. So like last year, I went to Congress and I actually had meetings with people from um, our Colorado, our, our congressional representatives, trying to get that on their radar because it sh we should have an open enrollment for Part D prescription drug plans as well. Of course, it's going to take them probably a few years before you know any legislation comes through. We'll see. I'm going back again this February to try and, and drum up some support again, but you know, that's that's something. So if you have a Part D plan, get it right by December 7th. Um, so let me, let me make sure I, I got this drug thing straight. So 2025, $2,000 out of pocket spending cap. Um, but if, if you choose a drug plan and the drugs you they're they're taking or might be taking are not in the formulary then you could spend more than two thousand dollars is that correct or incorrect that's correct okay so you could actually end up spending five or ten thousand dollars i mean depending on what drugs you're taking if they're not on your plan's formulary yeah if you don't if you don't get on the right plan you could end up having to pay out of pocket that's right Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and we had a comment here that said, it sounds like you're anti-original Medicare. Um, I, I don't know if you want to talk about that or not. <laughs> but Well, I'm anti-paper Medicare card by itself. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm all for Medicare Advantage plans with supplements and Part D plans. I think they're terrific. I think it's a great system. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, from what I've read in that article you mentioned that, um, and you showed it on your chart too, that 
uh, more and more people are signing up for the Advantage plans um, in some form. Yeah, so people choose it. I mean, but I, I think the Medicare supplements are are great. I I love how plan how easy Plan G is. Right? You just here you go. Here's my Plan G. You know the the and Part D prescription drug plans. Um, they're they're good too. Um, I do see increased out of pocket costs for some people. Not everyone, um, but some people have to pay more for their medications with a standalone Part D prescription drug plan than they do with the embedded plans. I think that's how part of, part of the way that Medicare Advantage plans um, encourage people to go on to Medicare Advantage plans is the pricing for Part D prescription drugs is often favorable on a Medicare Advantage plan over a Part D prescription drug plan. But I don't want to, don't get me wrong, I love everything about Medicare. Supplements, Part D plans, all of it, it's all good. I just will give you the okay. information and then you can choose what you're, what you want. I think it's all good. Okay. Thank you. All right. It looks like I'm about to run out of time. I'm not going to go through Medicare Advantage plans too much. Um, there are HMOs and PPOs. There's some other kinds of plans. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan, um, if you have an HMO, you have a defined network of providers and you must stay in network unless it's an emergency. Um, with a PPO plan, you're still going to choose as best you can to stay in network because you'll pay less if you um, are seeing a provider who has a contract with the plan. If you go out of network, typically you pay more. Not always, but um, typically you would pay more if you went out of network with a PPO plan. There are also special needs plans for people who have certain chronic conditions um, or people who are low income who have Medicare and also Medicaid. There are dual eligible plans that are interesting. Um, so those are some different kinds of plans um, for Medicare Advantage. And they do not always, but oftentimes do include prescription drugs. Um, every Medicare Advantage plan has a summary of benefits, just like a Part D plan does. And so you want to double check so that you understand your plan and you are not surprised in the winter when you go to the doctor or you go to use your, your plan the first time. Um, you also want to double check your Medicare Advantage Part D formulary, just like you would with a standalone Part D plan, um, because if your drugs are not included on the plan the following year, or if they change a tier, or if they change how much you have to pay when you pick up a prescription, um, you would like to know that in advance so that you are um, an informed consumer. Um, you can enroll at various times of the year. We've talked about that a little tiny bit. Um, we help as a brokerage um, to make sure that your Medicare Advantage plans include your Part D prescription drugs as well as your doctors. We look all of that up to help confirm that. Um, for Medicare supplement plans, we help to explain what the, why there are different rates from the different plans and the different carriers and how to evaluate those. And then for Part D prescription drugs, we do the same. Look up the drugs, make sure that um, you understand the plan and what the costs are going to be associated with that. Um, little self-advertisement uh, here. There are, according to Medicare.gov, I went on to Medicare.gov to pull these figures yesterday. There are 46 Medicare Advantage plans in the Denver metro area. That's not even throughout the state. This is just Denver metro. Um, 12 Medigap policies available. Not every carrier offers all 12 and then 21 different Part D plans. So you can go on to medicare.gov and give yourself brain damage and try and figure out all the stuff out by yourself, or I can help you with it, which I'd love to do. Um, don't talk to the people on the phone. If you can avoid it, it's usually better to talk to someone local because local people know your local nuances with the plans. Like I said before, when we are educated by the carrier reps who tell us about their particular plans, we can um, pass that information on to you tell us what you need. Um, and also, if you have questions or concerns throughout the year, we offer customer service. We are uh, work as an advocate. Um, if you need um, to know what insurance words to use, if you know a claim goes through and gets messed up, um, and we're paid by the carriers when you enroll. It doesn't cost you anything out of pocket. It's built in already. So for you, um, as a consumer, you pay exactly the same amount to have the advice of, um, of, of one of our teachers. Um, we do not work for the government. 
Uh, over here on the right-hand side, you can see the Medicare phone number, the Social Security phone number, and the websites. I want to point out that these websites end in .gov. If you just type in Medicare, you could end up in a .com or .net sort of website, which are typically sales websites. So be careful that you're going to .gov. Um, you can also talk to... Um, uh, one eight hundred Medicare. Although somebody told me last week that they're getting the calls are getting dropped um, right now. They're a little. It's this time of year. It's a little bit busy um, when you call in. So if you get dropped, um, just call back. Um, also, the state, um, the local state health insurance program, um, the SHIP counselors, they are not allowed to uh, advise on what plans um, would be correct for you. They can just answer. Um, they can do kind of like what I did today, educational. Um, information um, and they can help you with that, but they are they do not go through testing every year and they do not know the carrier products like we do. Um, I have a quick question. Like to, yes. Do you, will you just talk to someone if they have some more complicated questions? You don't charge for your time. You'll just sit and advise them. Thank you. That's, and that's, it, I, I will never tell you to go on something if it's not in your best interest. That's how I built my business. That's how people know and they trust me. So, you know, same thing when I was teaching. I got into teaching when I was a high school teacher because I wanted to make a difference in my community and be helpful to people and I sleep well at night. I do the same thing with this. So if you are on the right plan for you, I will tell you that. And then you're going to go tell three of your friends how awesome I am. So... <laughs> That's how I, that's how, um, that's how we operate anyway. So if you are interested in talking to me, um, this QR code will send you directly to my calendar. Um, you can also um, go on our website, medicare-teachers.com and our phone number is on there. You're welcome to get in touch um, and we're happy to help. Uh, we, had, we had one last question and this is the last question. Um, I just started Medicare and started with original Medicare, a Medigap plan G and plan D. If I switch to part C, how much premium does Medicare send to the private Medicare Advantage plan to provide my benefit coverage? I could not give you that exact dollar amount. I don't know it and I'm not 100% sure it's public. It might be, um, but they are sending money. So Part of your FICA taxes was going into the Medicare trust fund plus the money that you're paying for your Part B. So Medicare is transferring money every month behind the scenes, whether or not you use services um, to that insurance company. And then there's a pool of money to pay claims. So that way, most people aren't having a heart attack in any given month, right? So most people aren't even going to the doctor. Maybe you go once. So there's a pool of money to pay the claims there. So um, that's they're kind of diversifying the risk by putting a bunch of money in the same pool. And Medicare Advantage plans, they're private insurance companies, they're for-profit companies. Um, they are allowed to make a profit, but they're capped on their profit. They're not allowed to make money hand over fist. So if they make, if they exceed the percentage of profit that they're allowed with that money, then they must give that money back to the Medicare beneficiaries. And the way that they give that money back is not by sending you a check. They take that money and they put it back into the plans to buy down the costs of services or to add in other things with the Medicare Advantage plans, which I'm not allowed to talk about. Um, <laughs> to, they add things in to make the plans, um, to give it back to the beneficiaries in some fashion. Okay, thank you. Well, this has been very informative. Thank you, Chandra. And thanks to all of you for joining us. If, if you liked um, this session, I'll tell your friends. And, uh, and we will be getting it posted on our website uh, early next week uh, as, as a recording. So um, you're, you're free to check it out. Um, you know, uh, tell your friends about it. They can watch it. So um, I think the uh, it's very timely because, you know, here we are it's in enrollment season. Uh, so uh, thanks again, Chandra, and thank you all for, for joining today. Have a, have a great afternoon.